I welcome everyone to our God's Word Fellowship Podcast. I am Vanita Santiago. God is good all the time. And all the time our God is good. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we come into your presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, your good and your faithfulness endures forever. Lord, your God Almighty, besides you there is none. You are the only one Savior, besides you there is none. The one who hears our prayer. The one who answers from heaven. Father, you are so loving. You are so good. You are so merciful to us, Father. Thank you so much for your everlasting love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness that we are experiencing in our life. Father, even as we are going to meditate on your word, Lord, I pray that you help us to see the things which we haven't seen before. Lord, I pray that you give us mighty revelations. Father, I pray that you help us to see the things that way you are seeing things, Father. Teach us out of your word. Teach us through your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you encourage each and every one of us with your word. Let your word quicken us. Let your word strengthen us. Let your word help us to propel, help us to move forward in our life and to overcome every obstacle, every hurdle that we are facing in our life. Father, with you we are able to move forward. Father, we thank you for helping us, strengthening us in your word, in your will and in your plan for our life. We thank you that you heard and answered all our prayers. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We have been studying on the series called Seeing as God Sees and this is part 4. Let's read our text from Judges 6 verse 11 onwards. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. That pertained unto Joash the Abias right. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So God has come down to help Gideon and as well as the children of Israel. See, it is God's desire to redeem the children of Israel from the hand of Midianites. He doesn't like to see his own children being oppressed by enemies. See, God always wants to redeem you. God always wants to set you free and deliver you from your trouble. Anything that you are going through in your life. When God is ready, when God is willing, when he is able, then we have to cooperate with God. See, man is walking away from God's blessings. It is not that God is withholding blessings from his children. It is his desire and his eternal will to bless you, to increase you and to multiply you. Redemption is his plan even from before the foundation of the world. That is God's eternal will and purpose for every believer's life. See, God wants to prosper every child. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. When his children are broke, when his children are suffering, it doesn't please God. It's not a delight for him. God delights in the prosperity of his children. God delights when their joy is full. God delights when his children are enjoying the blessings which Jesus Christ died to give for them. See, Jesus paid a terrible price to make the things available for you. The grace of God has always provided anything that you need in your life. The foundation. Jesus has already laid for you. You don't have to put any new foundation. Jesus Christ has already finished the works on the cross of Calvary for you. All you have to do today is receive them by faith. 
seeing yourself as god sees you need to renew your mind you need to change your thinking according to god's word you need to change the way the things that you are seeing how you are seeing and begin to see the things the way god sees how does god see you in christ jesus god sees you as a prosperous man as a prosperous woman he doesn't see you being broken and living in poverty and god sees you as a healthy man and healthy woman he doesn't see you you know suffering in sickness and disease and god sees you as a blessed people and god does not see you as suffering under the curse and because you are the chosen ones of god god delights in you and he has chosen you out of this world to be his sons to be his daughters you are a peculiar people a chosen ones god loves you so much the enemy will tell you and he will whisper you in your ears by attacking your identity he will whisper in your ears by saying who do you think you are why do you think that god should bless you look what you have done in your past your sins look at them just take uh, some attention pay some attention to what you have done go back and think about your past all the things that you have done the enemy will whisper in your ears and he will put these thoughts in your mind saying that you don't deserve god's blessing when enemy attacks you with your identity you know you should answer devil back see these thoughts people you know those people it will run in people's mind it's going on in their mind where do you get those thoughts from devil puts in your mind at that time when you are when thoughts are running your mind the negative thoughts are running your mind saying that god doesn't love me and why will god uh, wants to bless me you know what you should answer back devil at that time you put devil back in his place tell the devil i am a child of god i am a daughter of god god loves me my past sins and my anything that i have done the blood of jesus christ has paid for that i am righteous before god in christ jesus god has accepted me in jesus i am a beloved child of god god loves me that's why he will bless me that's why he will prosper me and you show devil his place saying that you are already doomed you are destined to hell tell devil and tell him where he is going you are going to hell and you are already defeated forever for eternity tell devil his destiny his identity you strengthen yourself in the word of god you strengthen yourself in the identity which god has given you don't you ever give place to devil to see yourself down you are always blessed in christ jesus god always loves you he will never hate you no good thing he will withhold from them that walk uprightly if you are a man or woman who fears god who keeping his commandments god delights in blessing you god wants to prosper you always make this confession saying that i am a beloved of god god has blessed me god delights in my blessing god delights in my prosperity god delights in my health god delights in my well being and god has accepted me as beloved in christ jesus that's how you should speak about yourself you may not feel like it the enemy may bring uh, things before your eyes uh, your past and what all you have done you need to tell devil jesus has already forgiven me i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus and god loves me even today as much as he loved me before there is no way god can hate you god loves you if god loves you why does he want withhold blessing from you that's why i'm telling don't let enemy cheat you don't let the devil deceive you 
Stay away from deception. He lies to you saying that he is speaking the truth. He is speaking all lies to you. The word of God when when it says you accept as it is in the Bible. Don't let anything distract you from the word of God. God loves you so much beloved children and you accept that and you recognize yourself as a child of God. Don't lose your identity. Don't identify yourself with uh, poverty. Don't identify yourself with sickness and disease and being broken. Identify yourself in Christ Jesus. Because in Christ Jesus, all the blessings are available for you. Anything that you need in your life. Let's read some verses from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want to read verse 4 and 5 also. According as he has chosen us in him, in Christ Jesus we are chosen. When? Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated unto us the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And verse 6 it says we are accepted in the beloved. And verse 7 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 11 it says in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. See, God has already predestinated us to live a good life, to live a life of blessing. God has already blessed us in Christ Jesus. He is not going to bless you in the future after you have done 40 days of fasting prayer and 15 days of fasting prayer and live a consecrated and holy life and then he will decide whether to bless you or not. No, well, while you are yet sinner, Christ died for you. When you have not done anything good in your life, God has commanded his love towards you. See, God is not telling today so that you know God loves you so much even though you are a sinner and you can continue in your sin. No, that's not what I am speaking. What I am speaking is if God has loved you and died for you, even when you were a sinner, now that you are born again and you are a child of God and God has given you a title saying that you are a child of God. And why do you think that God will hate you now? You are accepted as beloved in Christ Jesus. God has accepted you in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, God is going to bless you with everything. And he has already blessed you. Now that we have to see ourselves blessed in Christ Jesus. If you are having a financial deficit in your life, just go back to Galatians 3 verse 13. Read that verse. What does it say? Let's go to Galatians 3 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Verse 14 That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. What is it that living under the curse? Go back and read Deuteronomy 28 and uh, Leviticus 26. There you will read the difference between blessing and curse. The first part of the chapter speaks about blessing. The second part of the chapter will speak about the curse. So if Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, go back and read those curses where it says that poverty comes under the curse. Sickness comes under the curse. Failure comes under the curse. Defeat comes under the curse. All those things. 
not moving forward will come under the curse failure will come under the curse all those things you should say that is not for me i am predestinated to win i am predestinated by the purpose of god by the will of god to prosper to increase and to multiply that is my portion prosperity is my portion you have to declare that boldly saying that is my part that's when you are receiving that for yourself that's when that you are accepting what jesus christ has done for you see the works of christ on the cross it's not simple as easy as you think Jesus has done those things for three and a half years executed the plan of God perfectly the redemption plan of God was executed through Jesus Christ in a perfect manner Jesus did not miss anything he kept all the law of God and did not disobey one commandment he lived a sinless life spotless life and died on the cross as a perfect lamb of god that's what has made salvation available for us we don't have to keep everything because jesus has kept so we are going to receive everything by faith through grace which jesus christ has made available for you so how many of us think ourselves as being redeemed from the curse of the law as being redeemed from poverty as being redeemed from sickness so if you have not done so far in your life start thinking like that start imagining your life start living your life according to what god has said so many people i'm not telling you to try so many people would say i've tried all that and still not working in my life god doesn't say anywhere in the bible try my word god is telling leave my word follow my word god is into practical application many people they separate god from this material world god is not interested in my material blessing no it's not like that god is always interested in your material blessings how many people who think they are so holy they don't like money they don't like prosperity they think themselves that they are holy and they stay away from money that's not being holy you can have all the money in your hand and still live a holy life what's wrong with having money in your hands if you have money in your hands do things for god that's what pleases god see when we die and go to heaven heaven is full of gold full of diamonds beryl and crystals all costly stones one gate is made of one pearl one big pearl so heaven is a place where is there is full of prosperity and god wants to give the days of heaven on earth for you so how do you experience the days of heaven on earth by seeing things as god sees god sees you as a prosperous people so do you see yourself as prosperous man or woman so it is in your hands so if you want to move forward in your life have faith in god's word and see as god sees see there are something that faith will do for you in your life and there are some things that fear will do for you in your life so you have to choose the way of faith the way of faith is a way of life faith in god's word gives you courage to step forward if you believe in god's word you will move forward you will take a step forward you will not pull back how god is with me i go and i move forward and i will have victory in the way that i am going that's the courage you will move forward but if you fear and believe what enemy is saying if what enemy is whispering in your ears this is what will happen to you fear in enemy's word will keep you in the bondage wherever you are already now do you want to remain in the bondage where you are now or you want to come out do you want freedom in your life do you want that liberation 
do you want to be set free from any trouble that you are going through wherever you are now in the same place change your thinking change your mind according to god's word the change in your mind is what is going to bring you out from where you are now to the place where god wants you to have we'll read one more verse and close for today let's go to mark 11 this is about the faith passage here verse 22 onwards and jesus answering saith unto them have faith in god and this is the foundation first you have to have faith in god then verse 23 for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatever he says see god is telling whatever you say will come to pass if you don't doubt god believes in you that you can do this if you say without doubting in your heart by believing god's word you can have whatever you say god believes in you so much that you can do but how much do you believe in yourself see people are limiting god in their mind people are limiting what god can do for them see god wants to bless his children in a greater measure beyond what they ask or even think god can do that in your life what is that hindering god's work in your life or what god can do in your life it's you are thinking about him you are thinking about god is limiting your finances is limiting your blessings is limiting your health i'm telling if you want to enjoy everything that jesus christ died for you then begin yourself seeing as god sees you see it's a very easy thing that jesus christ has made for us we don't have to struggle hard this is the easy path jesus christ has given for us he has done all the hard part and he has given the easiest simple path faith is very easy you don't have to struggle to live by faith it's the easy road the simple road but will bring profound results profound blessings in your life which you could not have done in your natural strength in your natural ability that's why god is with you to help you to prosper you and to make you a successful people so that you can go and tell people i am a child of god this is how god's children will live so you are a chosen generation a peculiar people you don't have to live like the world is living you don't have to go through the things what the world is going through you are different god being with you will make all the difference in your life if god is with me then i don't have to struggle if i am god conscious if the holy spirit the greater one who is dwelling on the inside of me you should not think yourself as weak and beaten down person you should think positively you know you will never be defeated you will never be ashamed you know why because nobody can defeat god if they have to defeat you then they have to defeat god but the thing is god is almighty all powerful nobody can defeat him so if god is for you what is that that can stand against you and put you down there's nothing nothing can bring you down god will exalt you god will lift you so begin thinking and seeing yourself as god sees and you will enjoy your blessings and you will walk into the blessings which god has for you thank you so much for listening to this message we will continue again the next week god bless you jesus christ is coming soon